What's up everyone, welcome to another episode of Garage Topics. Today is finally the day, hopefully, that we get the lift put on this Tundra. It's been a long time coming, it's super cold out. I'm gonna show you what's going on. I knew this would be an issue from the start. My buddy Trey let me use his garage, but I've got some other stuff going on at the house today, so I have to do this here. And look here, the Tundra is too big for this garage. This garage is 19 feet deep. This Tundra is 19.2 feet long. So it does not fit. Even if you press it up all the way against the, the wall, it wouldn't, wouldn't fit. We got the wheel off, and basically we're replacing almost all of this in here. So the upper control arm we're replacing. Oh, super windy, it's great. What a great day. The, top, the lower ball joints are notorious for going bad on these things, about 100,000 miles, and I have literally right at 100,000 miles. Um, go watch my other episode. I'm um, talking about all the parts I'm going to replace for the full lineup, but lower ball, lower ball joints got to come out, upper ball joints got to come out, upper control arms got to come out, and the whole strut's got to come out. Um, so I'm going to get to cracking. Uh, we got the heater going, so it's kind of loud. I apologize. This whole side has just been trial and error. Literally, everything, everything only took me about 30 minutes except for the ball joint which is attached to the knuckle over here. That was such a pain in the ass because this tool doesn't fit in the wheel well. So you have to take the entire knuckle off or bend it out a little bit, which was pulling on the CV joint, which was pulling on the brake line. So I just took the knuckle off. Everything else took me like 30 minutes. So I'll do the other side. I'm gonna do the other side in depth to show what's going on. But now everything's out. The control arm's out, the strut's out, everything's out. So I'm gonna stop putting stuff back in. I started this project on a Saturday and everything was going okay up until the ball joint. That was a little bit tough to get out. Now I know what to do, just take the whole spindle out. But the spring compressor was what got me. Today is Wednesday. So let me show you here. These are the assembled 6112s. You can compress the stock springs and struts um, with a rental tool because they, they clamp on. They clamp on the, the spring up top and down the bottom. The issue with the 6112s, because they're such beefy boys, like. That's my fist, and that's about the size of my fist. So these are massive valve uh, bodies on this. You can I can't even fit a finger between the valve, the strut body, and the spring. That resulted in the spring compressor not being able to fit between this to compress it to put the top hats on. So I had to wait a couple days. I ordered brand new top hats. Um, I'll put the link in the description below. These are for the Tundra, and I think they work for other Toyota applications. So, brand new top hats, brand new everything. So this entire assembly is brand new. Um, same with this one as well. This is going to enable us to just take the old one out and plop it back in. But I'm going to do this side, and when we get to this side, I'll show you exactly what I did um, and how to do it. But there's almost no way I get around having someone else assemble these. You need a wall-mounted strut compressor tool, so take it to a shop. Out of convenience, you have to have someone else to compress these, in my opinion, at least for the Tundras. So let's put this on and we'll get to the other side. All right, it's another day, life happened. I couldn't work on it anymore that night, so I put it back together and drove it out and now it's another day. It's the weekend, we actually got some sun. So I didn't film this just because it's kind of annoying, but basically to get started, you want to pop the tie rod end and you also want to pop the ball joint down here. And so you can use special tools, but what works for me is you loosen these bolts, obviously, or these nuts, and then on the tie rod, um, sorry, on the ball joint housing itself, whack the crap out of that with a big ass hammer, like this thing. It took me probably 30 seconds of whacking it, like this, right on that section, and what that did, it loosened it up and it got free. I sprayed some PP Blaster on there, I don't know if it helped or not. The other side was a whole lot easier than this side, that's why I did that. Um, same thing with the bottom, I just, once you remove the tie rod, the whole controller moves, moves around a little bit more freely. And what I did, uh, it just moves on the, uh, just moves on the spindle on the top control arm. Put a jack with the wood on the hub and the rotor to move it out the way so you could whack on this easier. So I just whacked on this, this is the, this is actually, isn't actually the ball joint housing, it's the off the control arm, but you whack this and what it did, it got free. So now it literally you can just lift these right up and replace it. There's four bolts down here. I zipped those out. Honestly, without the Milwaukee tool, I don't know how I would do all this job. All right, I'm gonna try and do this with one hand. One hand on the hammer, one hand on the GoPro. This ball joint up here is the same situation. 
with the Camberg upper control arms, this whole ball joint assembly gets replaced along with the top ball joint. So, top control arm, sorry. So, the bolt is loose up here, it was a 19, and it won't, like, you don't want to hit it from here because it'll mess up the thread. So, you want to hit it on here, which is going to loosen it all up and get it free. So, let's try, see if I can give it a couple whacks. Give it a couple whacks down here. There we go, boom, you see that? All of a sudden, it just freed up, freed itself up and that nut is what kept it in place. So, right now, besides a couple of, uh, besides a couple of um, wires, the brake lines and such, this whole hub's gonna come off if it wasn't for this bolt up here. So, I'm gonna take the caliper off, hang it over here, and you need to press this ball joint out to put the new uniball in. It's almost impossible to do on the vehicle, so I'm gonna, get the spindle, take it off the car, because we're replacing the lower board joint anyway, it's pretty simple. All these lines here you're gonna undo, which you had to do anyway, so we'll get to this right now. All right, I forgot one piece. To get the whole spindle off, obviously you need to take all the rotor and stuff, so like I didn't have to disconnect any brake lines, I just got this hanging over here, and all of the stuff that was attached to the spindle hub, I've smushed it off to the side. You have to get the CV axle out so you can take the whole thing off. It's from Toyota. They come with these metal caps that go in here. Um, and it's got a castle ring nut and um, thingamabob, thingamabob that goes through. You got this cap that goes on here. You, you kind of have to damage it a little bit, I found, to get it to come off. This one wasn't that bad. The other side, I kind of mangled it. But you can see how clean and nice it looks in here. So this is definitely doing its job. So you might want to buy new ones of those. Um, this nut in here for a first gen Tundra is 35 millimeters. This Milwaukee boy makes this easy work of it. Watch this, like this would be miserable without this tool. Get ready for this. Get it on here. Nope, I got the wrong one on, whoops. All right, here it is. here's the 35 millimeter big boy. Look at this, slip right on and this makes easy work of this. Boom. Like, that would have been miserable without this Milwaukee tools. I'm not trying to pitch them, they don't, they don't pay me. Uh, just having these Milwaukee tools have made my life a thousand times easier for working on vehicles. So now this whole thing will come off. Um, we'll unbolt this up top and then we can take the whole spindle off and press out this ball joint. Yeah, after doing this other side, this was way easier. So you just hang all this off to the side. Don't disconnect any lines. There's no tension on any of this. It's all good to go. There's one more bolt that's control. Uh, this whole line is attached to the upper control arm. We'll take care of that in a little bit. But then you take the whole hub off and the whole spindle, so it sits right here. Man, I need new rotors. That might be another episode. Anyways, the ball joint's gonna be pressed out here. Um, but taking a look in here, it shows you exactly what you're dealing with with the lower ball joint. So we've already taken the nut off of it and freed it off. So literally, this will plop right out of here. I think. Oh, maybe it needs another whack because it got bound up again. There we go. Yeah, so this is the ball joint. This is the stock Toyota ball joint. I think this is the original one. Eh, it's a little bit of grease on here. It's, it feels pretty good, but we've got new OEM ball joints. Um, it's really not hard to replace these at all. This is the only big issue I've seen with these Tundras, so definitely swap them out. If you got more than 100,000 miles or you think there's more than 100,000 miles on them. So now this is all good to go. I'm gonna first address this ball joint to get this off and then we'll tackle the control arms and such. Man, this is so much easier to deal with this on the floor versus dealing with it in the car because look how long this thread section is of this ball joint presser tool. It doesn't fit up in the wheel well. It's miserable. So this is a lifesaver. This is the way to do it. This is just a rental tool that I got from the hardware store. It's big old C-clamp essentially. So this here actually goes around the ball joint so the ball joint has room to pop into this. And then this end just twists and threads this way and puts a bunch of pressure to push the ball joint out of this hub, this spindle. You're supposed to use this cap here, which would rest on the end of the ball joint. This is, we don't need this ball joint anymore. I found it easier on this Tundra to just put the thread section straight on the ball joint. You want it to bound, uh, bind up a little bit because this ball joint wants to move. That's the whole point of a ball joint. Again, I don't know how I would do this without this Milwaukee boy. 
you could sit here and put a bunch of force on it, but literally I can probably put it in here. If this is a line right, within a second it'll boop, pop it out. So let's try this. All right, you might have to try this a couple times because sometimes this isn't on here perfectly centered, which this one looks like it might not be, so we'll just see. Nope, it's pushing in. Oh, crud. Whoops, that was almost bad. I forgot there's a C-clip on here. I need to remove this. I've got these special C-clip tools. That would have been bad. Let's remove this now. It's hard to tell, but I, I moved the C-clip from away from the spindle, so no, it's no longer in the groove that holds the ball joint in. I just literally just moved it about, I don't know, a quarter of an inch up, and I just, honestly, once I opened it with the C-clip pliers, I used a screwdriver and pressed it on up. So now, there's a ridge in here, which you can see, which is gonna allow this whole thing to push through, hopefully. Uh, it's on the right way now, so put this on here. All right, that's good. That should be centered on here, so the pressure's gonna pop it out. Let's hope. Boom! That worked perfectly. So you see here, this cup gave this room to push into. And so here is the ball joint. And you can see it better here that the, like the lip in here is where the C-clip holds us in into the actual hub. So this is good to go now. I'm gonna clean this up as best I can and then we're gonna get ready to set it up for the Camberg control arms. All right, now we're starting to get to some of the fun stuff. This is all cleaned up now. We're basically ready for the Camberg upper control arms. These things are sick, so it's a uniball. So this is grease in here and this ball, and this ball moves around in here. So a stud actually goes through this, which is right here. People on the internet keep this in the freezer for a couple days. I did it. It shouldn't really matter because you're gonna press it in anyway, but it might help it go into the sleeve. So what happens is this little collar up here goes on the bolt like this, it slides into here, into the top of it, and then the other side, let me get this. Okay, here's the control arm. This sleeve goes into the top, like that. And then this sleeve goes into the bottom. And then a bolt holds it all together. This sleeve portion actually gets pressed into the hub. Um, it, it's cold, it should be fine, but I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in now. This setup is kind of crazy, it's actually a pain in the ass. I've got it almost all the way in, but basically, same thing except you want this to push into this so that the back end can press the stud section into the hub. It's almost there. You want to make sure that, that there's no gap in between the metal hub and the um, stud thing itself. There's about a millimeter gap, so I'm going to crank on it just a little bit more. You want to make sure that it goes in straight. All right, came off. That's about done. Take a look. So that now this is pressed in, you see? And so now the control arm sits on this. It looks pretty good in, to me. Just double check that this is all the way in. You'll know because there's that little ridge in there, which is where another C-clip sits in. You can use the stock C-clip or Camberg provides a C-clip for you to put in there. So if the C-clip fits in there and you don't see any ring gap below, you see it's a, it's a flush surface from the spindle to the stud, you're good to go. All right, we're on this workbench right now. The control arm's here, we gotta assemble this thing. I've already done this side a little bit. First thing you wanna do is it comes with these Zerk fittings. This is so you can grease this at, when you're done, like if you need to grease it in the future. We've got grease here that we'll actually be using on all this, but uh, this is to help in the future. So they come just open like this, you screw those in, and they're open like this. They come with these, uh, pro I don't know what material bushings, but I think the Delrin. So you press those in by hand, it's not too hard. This Camberg on here, it's pretty cool. Just press this in by hand and then do each side. And then <clears throat> what's left is the sleeves. So this sleeve here has to go in through here. And because this is pretty tight fitting, you use the ball joint press. It, it doesn't require that much force. You can just use a regular ratchet if you want to. And, and this is gonna press in and be the middle point here, which so the bolt that holds this upper control arm in is gonna pass through this sleeve. And when we put it in here, you load this up with the grease like crazy. That's basically what you're looping up in here. So I'm gonna not record this because it's so messy and I'm gonna wear gloves, but I'll show you once I'm done what it looks like. All right, we're all assembled now. 
you didn't miss anything because this was gross. So the grease you use in here was disgusting. I had gloves on, I had to have two pairs of gloves. It went everywhere. So I've cleaned everything up. The biggest pain in the ass with this whole project so far, besides all well, the other trial and error on the other side, is getting these washers to fit in here. So it's a super tight fit in here. See those washers there? And I went back and actually pressed the bushings in more so that this washer could slide in. You put those two in, put the bolt in, it's got this whole area here. There's a brake line in the way, but that bolt actually removes that brake line and bracket to where it is the best. So, because the bolt comes all the way out here, goes all the way through. You assemble that side with the washers, press it through a little bit. So you've got a little bit of wiggle room on this side and then you'll be able to slide the washer in. But things are just loose right now. Um, we gotta replace the strut. The bolts are loose up, up top and down the bottom. I don't actually have the control arm in right now. If I lift this up, the whole spindle will pop out because the strut, the new one, which is back there and all assembled, make sure you assemble your 6112s. That strut is obviously taller because that's what's causing the lift. So with the current control arm set up, it won't work. So what you're gonna do is take the strut out that's in here, the stock one, and then these bolts down here for the lower control arms, they're under some tension. So I loosen those and also loosen the, uh, uh, the sway bar as well to allow the bottom control arm to move around freely. Right now the top isn't even tightened at all, so it's, it'll move around freely as well. Once you get everything assembled with a strut in and the control arm in place, that's when you can start tightening things down. So let's plop it in. All right, I think we've got it all done. I'm a little messy, but it's all good. Saving cash. Check it out. So everything's tightened up in here. It's drooping a little bit, but once we put the wheel on, it'll pick right up. Um, the only thing that you do with the new control arm is you take off this metal bracket. It's somewhere down there. You just bend it with some pliers, and then this new little grommet piece comes with the Camberg upper control arms. So that's all good to go. These are tied up here. That's tight. Um, Talk specs for all the Camberg stuff comes with the kit and instructions. Um, and then everything else is torqued to spec. I left the sway bar not fully tight because the other side isn't on yet, so I'll wait for it to get lower on the ground and then try and tighten that side and the other side. So I think I'm ready to put the wheels back on, but that'll basically level the truck, but I'm not actually looking to level the truck. I'm looking to actually keep the same rake from factory, but just raise it up a little bit. So I still have the rear to do. I'm gonna add a leaf in the back, so. That's all I got for tonight though. I'm gonna put this back on and get to that in the morning. So when it's bright out tomorrow morning, I'll show you what it looks like level, but then we'll actually put the outer leaves in the back. That should be a whole lot easier. We're also adding bill scenes back there as well, but that's literally two bolts. So let's get to it. I'm gonna go, bed, go to bed with this wheel on. All right, so next day, beautiful morning out, sun's out, it's a good day. This is what the truck's looking like. Uh, the shade's kind of blowing it. Let me go around the other side, but right now it actually looks really good and leveled. I'm really happy with how it looks so far, but I think I want to definitely add the add leaf to the back to, because I'm going to be towing with this. I don't want it to be squatting. So right now from afar, it looks pretty level, but it actually looks a little odd because the back, because of how the car truck was meant to be. So I, th I think I'm still going to add the add leaf to the rear, but it's looking great up front. You can tell the alignment's off a little bit, obviously, because we've fooled around with all the suspension, but looking good. All right, let's back this up and put it in our old garage. We got the Tundra in the garage backed up, took the wheels off. I ended up using a block underneath the rear axle and then had to put some blocks underneath my jack stand to get it tall enough. Before I, um, uh, before I let the truck back down, I took the wheels off because the whole rear end sags and I'm gonna use that jack to help me with positioning the rear end so that I can get the leafs un unpacked basically and put a new one in. So the outer leaf to my knowledge is gonna go above this um, overload spring and there's a bolt underneath this. Um, so what we need to do, we need to release the U bolts, get the pressure off those. Underneath this bump stop cap is a bolt which holds all these springs together. We'll put a clamp on it to keep everything in place when we're taking the bolt out so it doesn't mess anything up. We'll release the clamp, the springs will separate, we'll slip the spring in. This is the Wheeler's three leaf add leaf kit. It's got some sweet stickers from Trail Gear and maybe something from Wheeler's, but this comes with the big ass U-bolt and um, nuts for that. And then the three leaf add leaf. We've got some instructions here um, telling us what the deal is. So Wheeler's has been great. Definitely check them out. I'll put a link in the description for this product. Um, we're gonna take these out and then slap them on the old Tundra. Now that I've tackled this side, it actually went very smoothly. Um, it's all in there. 
the three pack at least in. I left the overload spring in here, not for lift, but because I actually use this truck for truck purposes. This is all in. The struts on top is not fully tightened in. I'm gonna wait for the other side to fully bolt that in, but this leaf spring is done. When we move to the other side, I'm gonna show you all the steps that we needed to do. That ball joint press that we used for the front, it's a, keep that for the back too, or just rent it if you're just doing the back. That you clip here, and then I have just a regular C-clamp that goes as well, but I actually use the C-clamp from the ball joint to press it down. What that does is it keeps the pressure off of the U-bolts so that you can safely take them out. And then that allows you to expand this whole section here. So let's get to that real quick. What I've done here is put the big ball joint C-clamp on. That's doing all the work. And then I put my regular C-clamp on tight. And then when I release this, all the pressure gets transferred to this. So I'm going to take this off and put it on this side. And then we can zap the bolts off right here. You hear me saying this Milwaukee's the best thing ever. It is. Look at this. This would be miserable to get off. Zippity bop. Oh, that one was already loose because I did the other side. So let's do the other one. Boom. Life is so much easier with that. And we're getting new bolts for the U-bolt, so. All right. Literally, that would have taken 20 minutes with a pry bar and such. So, again, these um, C-clamps are holding everything together. The top hat comes off the bottom. We retain this. I just put it down in the direction that it came off so you don't mess anything up. And then these stock U-bolts come off. And we're not going to use these again because these are too small because we're adding more leaf springs into this. So we'll get these off here. I can get this off. Sometimes it's a little bit stubborn. There we go. And so this is the bump stop that's stops the springs from rotting them out. To put this to the side, we will reuse this. There's a nut that, that has a bolt that goes through the leaf pack that holds everything together. We're gonna undo this, and then once we undo that, then we'll release the C-clamps. We'll remove the U-bolts, and then taking that nut off of this bolt that's down here, and now it's everything separated. And then the jack is actually underneath the whole rear axle. Uh, pay attention, you wanna do one at a, one at a time, because if you do both at the same time, the axle will wobble around and be a big old mess. So this spring is actually going to stay in place, but this bolt is going to be replaced by the one that's on the new leaf spring. So just keep pay attention to everything of the orientation of everything. So it's going to stay this way and put this to the side. This bolt at the bottom literally just comes right out. And then I had a little bit of issues. I had issues trying to get this out. If you compress the spring and get all the tension on the knot up top, it'll get the knot off if you get stuck with that. So we've got plenty of room here. Uh, everything looks good to go. We'll get these and bring them over. All right. This is the leaf spring three pack out of leaf. I got mine from Wheelers Off Road, links in the description. So this bolt is what's gonna replace the old bolt. There's like a sleeve that's on the threads here. You don't use that. I think that's just to protect it in shipping and also to keep some pressure on this here, so. It's a 14 millimeter nut, which you'll take out like so. The sleeve, don't need it. These you want to take off so that it'll fit around the existing leaf spring. These clips, to my knowledge, stay in place. So I'll unbolt this and then this bolt here at the bottom, it's going to go through the bottom of this leaf and then back up against this. You'll see it here in a second. I've lowered the jack even more to get enough room. So as you can see, the overload spring, I'm keeping this in. You don't have to. Um, I took the bolt that was keeping the three leaf pack uh, out, put it through the overload spring, and then back through the three springs here. And you can wiggle it around so that these clips get over the existing leaf springs. And then the bottom of this stud, there's a hole in the bottom of the axle that it just rests in. And then what you can do from here is you can use the jack to jack the axle back up and then one by one get that bolt to fit through the threads. I just sometimes I'll just hit it with a hammer a little bit just to shimmy it in the way, but pretty straightforward. So let me get to the jack. I need two hands of that. I've used the jack as much as I can, I think, and the bolt almost all the way through. It's basically resting, waiting to come to that top leaf. Um, you've got enough room right now. Eh, kind of sort of. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the C-clamp out and clamp it again a little bit, and then I'm gonna put the bolts through here. You do wanna retain this rod on these. 
to keep that in place and then use the C-clamps even more so we can clamp these all back together and then put the nut on this which was supplied in the kit. So it, it's pretty straightforward. Once you've done it once or twice, it goes on real easy. Just make sure that these little plastic pieces between the leaf springs, you keep those because that's what helps it from squeaking. So don't lose those. This nut's on pretty tight here, thanks to the C-clamps holding it. Um, some instructions I've seen online is you want to make sure that you don't see any sunlight through here at all. Thankfully, it's a sunny day out today, but yeah, there's no sunlight in here, so there's no binding on this at all. So now that we've done that, find our U-bolts. These come with a kit, and then what you want to do is you want to put the bump stop back on, but you'll notice that this stud is a whole lot taller than the old one is, and it doesn't sit on here so the instructions say for you to cut this off um, I'm, I've got just a cut off wheel so I'm gonna cut this off real quick and then once it's low I just basically chop it a couple threads above where the bolts at this will be able to plop on and then we can put the used bolts over and tighten it down and take the C-clamps off let's see we'll find the cap it should fit now. Yep, fit. Now, you bolt plop down. That's like so. And then you can put the mounts on underneath. These U bolts spring out, so you kind of want to clamp them with your hand to get them to fit a little bit. Actually, works to your advantage because it keeps the mount on without having to have the nuts in yet. Now we can put the nuts on the bottom. And then basically we'll take the C-clamps off and this leaf spring's good to go. In my opinion, removing the struts on the rear of this Tundra is the hardest part of this job. Bottom bolt's stupid easy. The top one is a pain in the ass. I don't know if you can see in here. So you, the, the nut just spins unless you have something on it pressing. The, the uh, passenger side or the driver's side isn't too bad. You can get from underneath the car. You need to lower the spare wheel and put it off to the side. Passenger side's miserable. And there's so many metal pieces up here that you can't see any of this from the other side. So I stuck an adjustable wrench in there and got the top of it. And now it's crammed in that metal piece there. I'm using it as leverage. Then I've got a ratcheting wrench here, which allows me to get it loose. But when this bolt comes to the top where that adjustable spanner is at, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to just spin. But by that point, it's pretty loose. So I use C uh, vice grips. I just ripped the plastic off the strut so you can see the metal because these are basically garbage you're not going to use these anywhere so clamp that down and that will be your point for getting the nut, top nut off but hopefully the reinstall is a lot easier than this this is what i was talking about earlier got the vice grip on here and my truck is even rusty and this was a pain in the ass so if you got a rusty truck i feel bad for you son i don't know what to do um about that so toss this up to the side and then we've got the new strut right here 5100 I just paid attention to the notes on the instructions and this three different washers, they look similar, but they're all different. This one's a different material and thick. This one's skinny and a shiny material. And this is thick and a shiny material. Based on how these ones are set up and based on just thinking about it, this thick one that looks like it's got a coating on it, I'm putting on the bottom because it's the only one that faces the bottom. So if any water sits in there, I think it's less likely to rust. Uh, this thin one I, I put because that has the thin one on there as well. And then the thick shiny one is going to go on top. So as it sits right now, it's going to go into the body. And then this bushing is going to go on top uh, like so. It's like the body's right here and the bushing. This and then the nut up top. Set it all straight. But that's top and top of there. It's pretty tight in there. But you should be able to get to it based on what we did earlier. I stand by my original word. This Shock was the hardest part of the rear end setup for the lift. You need a five millimeter, to my knowledge, you need a five millimeter Allen key that goes on top of the threads in here, which then that stops it from spinning. Then you have to put a wrench on this. It took like 20 minutes of just moving it a quarter inch at a time. That was miserable, but the shocks are on here. They look great. All I've got to do now is just tighten up the bolts at the bottom and then put the wheels on and we'll take a look and see how this actually looks. I'm really excited. All right, the tundra's done. I'm a mess, I'm covered in dirt and stuff, but it looks great. I'm gonna let it settle a little bit, drive it around some more, and then I'm not gonna wrap up the video yet. I'm gonna get some miles on it, get the suspension settled, get an alignment on it, and then finalize with what I'm thinking about the truck. Oh. All right, I've been driving the tundra now for three weeks, and I've gotta say, the suspension is really good. 
it soaks up bumps. You definitely tell this bump's still there, but from before, um, the other struts weren't bad, but you can definitely tell that these ones are a lot better. So I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I, I can't really tell if it's settled all that much. It definitely looks like it did when I first started, so maybe both ends settled as well. So uh, overall, I recommend these. Um, I, I mainly I tow with this truck. I'm not taking it into Baja 1000 or going rock crawling all the time. So honestly, it's more for looks than anything, but it gets the job done. It rides really good. That was the main reason I went with the 6112s up front is I want something that ride well, and they do. So if you've got any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Hit me up on Instagram or Facebook. I'm happy to help out. Uh, if your dog wants a suspension, make sure that you get the lift done correctly. Catch you guys later. Peace out.